what critical technologies should we be investing in, and are we investing enough in these areas? Uh, some that come to mind are quantum, uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning, nanotechnology, robotics, uh, even gene editing and synthetic biology. That's question one. Question two is, any strategic areas of concern where you would recommend a rapid acceleration of development so that we are better postured for that 10, 20, 30-year outlook that you noted, Dr. Mankin? So I'll, I'll start with you. I think that actually your list is a is a good one, um, and I think that's I think that's the right list. And I think the nature of of R and D is, um, in general, within limits. The more resources, the better, uh, because you don't know what's going to pay off, when it's going to pay off. To take the the example of directed energy that was that was raised earlier. Directed energy has reliably been sort of five or ten years out for my adult professional career. Except I think now we are actually at a, at a stage where we're, at, we're getting there. So uh, forecasting breakthroughs can be difficult. So I think, I think more resources are needed for, for those areas. I think in terms of where, uh, areas where, we're, where we may be falling behind, many of the same areas. Uh, I, would, I would put hypersonics in there as well. Uh, I think that's an, that's an area of, uh, of concern. Uh, AI most certainly, and, and quantum most, most certainly as well. Mr. Thomas? Yeah, I think, I think that's a great list that you've got. <clears throat> um, a couple things. One is that uh, during the Cold War, the United States was able to sustain uh, technological leads across the board. We just, we just ran up everything. Um, I don't know if we're going to have the fiscal luxury of doing that uh, in the com on the competitions that are coming. So we're going to have to be far more selective. I think your list is an excellent one uh, in terms of how we think about uh, perhaps narrowing scope. Um, I think the other is really think about what are the applications practically uh, in, in two ways. One, how are they going to change the sources of national wealth in the future? Um, how, do you, how do you get rich as you look out 30 years uh, from some of these technologies and what, what's the impact of that on our, on our broader society and economy? But then there's the more limited question of what are the military applications going to be and how is this potentially going to change the way wars are fought? And in a number of these technologies, Quantum, for instance, it really happens across the board. It changes our ability uh, to, to sense. It's going to change communications. Uh, it's going to change computation um, in, in ways that uh, could overthrow kind of the existing warfare regime uh, that, that we have today uh, with super sensitive sensors that can detect uh, magnetic anomalies and things like that that are, that are really beyond our scope today. Mr. Shari? <clears throat> Yes, ma'am. Um, so you, you heard my, uh, some of my views on this in the, in the last hearing. I think that if I had to choose to prioritize, I would focus things on information-based technologies. Those are things where we're seeing um, most rapid advances, um, and there's a lot of intersection and synergy among them. And so relationships between, um, for example, artificial intelligence being able to then process large amounts of data and having effects on, for example, synthetic biology. That's not to say there are other areas like direct energy, hypersonics, they're not important. They are important. Uh, DOD needs to invest there because we're not seeing commercial investments in those places, right? Google's not gonna go build a hypersonic weapon. We have to do that. Um, but I think we're more likely to see the payoff in information-based technologies. They're more likely to mature fastest and change warfare most significantly. I have 30 seconds left. You know, as we consider um, making sure that we're maintaining an edge in 21st century technologies. I'm concerned about our ability to enact national level whole of society plans. Uh, obviously, uh, China has a distinct advantage just in their top down uh, whole of government approach. What can we do to improve our national level coordination plans when it comes to this technological development? 